Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 398. The end of 2021 is almost here, which means now is the time to look back at the movies and moments that shaped the past year in cinema. Joining me now to talk about the superhero movies of 2021 is pop pop culture commentator, film reviewer, and author Jake Airy. You can find his work at studiojakemedia.com, and I'm glad to say that Jacob joins me now on the podcast, Jacob. I thank you so very much for joining me today. And thank you for having me on. It's I'm um, looking forward to this. I am too. As I was saying to you, Alfie, I'm such a big fan of your work. And it's really great to be able to talk to people about, you know, superhero movies. Um, and I think this year has been such a curious kind of year because it's like the first kind of year out like post-pandemic or, you know, maybe we should say post-pre-pandemic because I don't know what's going on now. It's like everything's just like it's back to the way it was like last year. Um, but, um, you know, it's been really interesting year because a lot of people have been going back to the cinema to watch superhero movies and just to put some facts towards them. I'm just going to look at the top five um, worldwide grossing superhero movies for the year. Um, number one is Spider-Man No Way Home. It's already got 1.16 billion that's just crazy the movie what came out last week was it yeah i think uh maybe a week and a half ago i mean and to make that much money that's kind of like you know in the realm of like avengers endgame avatar kind of stuff whether it still has the same legs of the cinema i'm not sure with the repeat viewings and such that's what those movies had so um next up on the list is venom let there be carnage at 501 million shang chi and the legend of the 10 rings at 432 million eternals at 401 million and Black Widow at 379 million. So looking at those box office receipts, it's clear that even though we're out of this post-pandemic period, superhero movies really are, you know, still a big box office draw, aren't they, Jacob? Yes, they are. And I honestly think that uh there there is something to be said that there are uh fads in film, right? The westerns kind of went away, the musicals kind of went away. But I think superhero movies will be a draw just because of the name recognition of some of the bigger heroes like Spider-Man and and, and the Batman, and even Venom to some degree, because Venom is a spin-off of Spider-Man. And if you ask me, Venom is the best Spider-Man villain. Mm-hmm. Uh I was hesitant to see Sony make a, a spin-off of him, but I actually enjoyed both of those films a great deal. So uh, yeah, I think that we will continue to see superhero films to be a box office draw uh, unless they uh, what's, unless they jump the shark with it. But hopefully we'll uh, we'll continue to see this fan. I as a comic book fan would love to see them continually come out and and for folks to enjoy them. I, I you know like I'm a big fan of superhero movies too because you know I don't know about your age but when I grew up in the 80s I didn't get them you know we didn't have superhero movies but I collected the comic books so I always imagined what these movies would look like to see them come to fruition on the screen is I reckon it's a really good thing it's really odd though this year more than any other year I feel like that this is the year of fan service and you could put in use that that term in any type of context you want whether it be positive or negative because a lot of people have. When it comes to something like, for example, one of the big superhero movie events this year was Zack Snyder's Justice League. And the whole point of that movie was that there was this huge 
push behind it from the fans. They wanted there's a huge petition and actually got Warner Brothers to, you know, give Zack Snyder that extra dollars and you know millions of dollars to get in the editing booth and to bring to bring his vision to life. Um, and not only that, but they actually kind of tied it in together with the whole kind of HBO Max kind of streaming service event as well. Um, you know, what do you think in regards to that fan service kind of notion of, of making films for the fans? Do you think this is something we're going to see more of? I mean, Spider-Man No Way Home has a, a, a similar kind of distinction to that, not to give away any spoilers, even though there's $1.1 billion worth of receipts behind it. But there are moments in the film that does kind of like lend itself to a lot of uh, fan service kind of stuff. Do you think we're going to see more of that in regards to these superhero movies? I honestly hope so, because it, it felt like for a couple of films that they were ignoring the fans. And mm. I, I actually, and people who know me know I'm a, a huge critic of Zack Snyder. I don't think he's a good filmmaker, but I supported Zack Snyder's Justice League because I thought Warner Brothers handled that whole situation very terribly. And, uh, you know, I, I, that's to say I didn't really care for Zack Snyder's Justice League. I thought it was just kind of a typical Snyder one, but I feel like sometimes Warner Brothers and Disney in particular kind of learned the wrong lessons from their films. So right. they went, uh, they saw the success of Man of Steel and thought, uh, okay, well, we can build off kind of this more grim, uh, this more grim adaptation of the characters when the real the real success behind Man of Steel is the acting skills of the cast hmm. and that we wanted to see Superman on film. Superman, in my opinion, is one of the most filmable uh, characters. And then, of course, they learned that wrong lesson. So then they they doubled down and make made Batman versus Superman even darker, which, you know, and to the point where you have Batman with a mounted machine gun. And for 90s kids who grew up watching Batman, the animated series, that was just uh, you don't even consider that as a possibility unless you're reading an Elseworlds comic. Hmm. So it was uh, so hopefully, though, with with Spider-Man No Way Home, they'll uh, so that the success of that film, they'll learn the correct lessons. So fans, they don't want to be talked down to. They don't want to be uh, made to look like idiots. They don't uh, like sort of what Disney was doing with with Star Wars. And of course, Spider-Man No Way Home, even though it takes place in the MC, it's actually a Sony film. It's not a yes. Disney film. Yeah. And that was kind of my big critique of Shang-Chi and Black Widow, which I did enjoy, by the way. I was not negative uh, other than to say they feel more like Disney films than Marvel films, mm -hmm. but uh, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home definitely felt like a, like a good Marvel film. It kind of brought back those early 2000 uh, tropes that we all like. So I hope that we'll see, we'll see more fan service in the sense they know what the fans want and not try to, and not learn the wrong lessons from the success of these films. I mean, there's so much wealth of experience behind them. You mentioned Star Wars right there. The, um, Say what you will. Like I am a fan of the of the newer Star Wars films. I, I did I did like them, but it's clear that um there was a vision that they had for the films, which by the time it got to Last Jedi and say the Solo, um uh, you know movie, it just wasn't working out fan wise. Um and, and I think they're going to try to not do the, make the same mistakes now with some of these some of these movies. Um, you mentioned Black Widow there. You know, this year was been really interesting because I mentioned before about HBO Max with regards to Zack Snyder. A lot of the Marvel content was tied into the Disney Plus launch of the streaming service. Um, and Black Widow was one of those films that was delayed, 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 like so many others, right? Um, and when they decided, did decide to finally take put it out there um, because, you know, cinemas are so limited uh, in regards to what you could do. We, we, we no one could open up. They decided to show it on a Disney Plus network, um, at least in conjunction to a limited theatrical release. Um, some people were fans of it. I was fans of it myself. I mean, I was in lockdown and I got a chance to watch it. I don't know about, about yourself, Jacob, in regards to that. Um, someone who wasn't really a fan of that outside the exhibitors was Scarlett Johansson. Um, because, and I think she, that kind of represents now, and I'm saying with the filmmakers in regards to HBO Max, it kind of represents now just exactly what the um, actors are signing up for. I don't think so many people expect to sign up for a, a digital, uh, straight to digital movie. 
Um, they wanted to, their films to be on the big box of it because they're movie stars, right? That's what movie stars do. Um, and then she sued Disney, which is just, I, I didn't see that coming from, I came out of left field and didn't see that happening. Um, do, you see, do you think there's long-term ramifications in regards to her suing Disney? Because she was with Disney for a very long time. They made lots of films together. Um, looked like it was a good relationship and then came this situation where all of a sudden Black Widow's on, you know, a streaming service and she didn't like it. I mean, do you think there's going to be ramifications regards to that or is that going to be more kind of like a, a one-off situation um, because, you know, people got a role with what's available to them. And if you're in a COVID situation, a pandemic situation, I'd rather have my movie show on uh, a streaming service and not be shown at all. Um, I honestly think that it's going to be uh, there's we're going to see a few other smaller versions. I think now that she's done sort of the big case, uh, we're going uh, I think that's over and done with. But I do think we're going to see smaller ones. Uh, I honestly think in, in her case, like you said, it was that she had put so much work into Black Widow. And don't forget, Black Widow started as part of paramount's mm, marvel universe that's right Disney yeah. inherited black widow when they bought marvel entertainment so she actually you now she's familiar with kevin feige head of marvel studios obviously but uh her interactions has mostly been uh, uh up until i believe age of ultron was the last film to have paramount after that it was mostly disney mm. so i think that are all disney actually uh, except for spider-man but I think that we're uh, that, like you said, she put her heart and soul in this. And I especially think that Disney was going through kind of an identity crisis because Bob Iger was resigning and he just let the IPs do whatever they want. Right. Hmm. He was like Kathleen Kennedy, make Star Wars however you want. Same to you, Kevin Feige, do the, that with Marvel. Bob Chaykit Peck comes in and he's a numbers guy. Right. So he's like, OK, is this thing making money? So I'm sure that also had something to do with it. Chaypek was seeing this more as, hey, we're coming out of this pandemic. Like, like you said, people aren't able to go to the theaters, California and New York and Illinois, they're all still locked down. So let's make this a streaming event because that'll get us more eyeballs on Disney+. Plus. And so he was looking at it more pragmatically, whereas I, I think Scarlett Johansson was looking at it very creatively. And I think we're going to see more of this. We saw this with Christopher Nolan and HBO Max. He was yeah. really angry about how they handled Tenet. Now he didn't sue obviously, but what does he do? He complains about it and turns right around and signs a deal with Netflix, which I think that was a slap in the face to HBO Max. <laughs> uh, but which if I was Netflix, I would be happy. I don't care what, how, why he signed. I want him to sign. And I think we're going to, but I think Scarlett Johansson is back. Apparently she's going to help produce some more films. Mm. Uh, we don't know the extent uh, of what her role is going to be, but uh, I think that's really good. I hope that, and I hope that sports out. Cause like you said, I live in California. I live in Los Angeles. We're still under severe lockdown right now. We just went back LA County just went back into lockdown. I got, uh, uh, I, I wasn't able to see the Eternals because of this. Hmm. So it was, uh, so I think for me, I see that the transition to streaming, at least as the second stop as a good thing. So theater, streaming DVD. That's how yeah. I would like to see it uh, happen. Cause I love going to theater. I love going, I, I my, it drives my wife crazy. I go by myself. Like if yeah. she's, I, I say, I want to see this film. She's like, well, I'm not really interested in that one. Like th that was our conversation with the green Knight. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm just going to go see it. <laughs> so I went and I actually, uh, I just went by myself and saw it. She was like, you really don't mind going by yourself. I'm like, Nope, it's fine. I so, prefer it. <laughs> I yeah, prefer yeah, going exactly. on my own. I, I, I don't know what it is, but um, I, I, I'm so used to doing it because I go to media screens, right? So you get, mm -hmm. you can, you usually can only bring, uh, bring yourself, especially to these type of Marvel films that have embargoes and such. And I prefer it though. I don't mind it. And you know, Black Widow. I, I did not see Black Widow on the big screen. I saw it on a small screen. But lately, I'm um, going to a lot of big, um, movies on the big screen. Spider Man being one of them. And while I can watch films on the small screen and I can review them, and, and I do think I can give them the proper, you know, appraisal that that, um, that way. It's just something about watching it in a dark in a theater, really big sound and, and screen visuals. It's just, it's yeah. like, I was visiting family in Texas when I, and I was like, one day they were like, what do you want to do today? And I was like, I want to go see Spider-Man. And so mm. that's what we did. And uh, seeing it in a theater uh, is, uh, is a, a very uh, unique experience, depending on the movie, obviously, but, course, yeah. uh, but seeing some, something as great as Spider-Man No Way Home, which I loved, like, I think I mentioned, I put it on my number three in my top. Yes. Yeah, so I just read your top 10 the today. Year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So 
so yeah, a really great, uh, really great experience there. And and hopefully with with in regards to streaming, like I said, streaming will be the second stop uh, for uh, for these movies who people when you don't have access to a movie theater. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by Eighties Tees. Eighties Tees is an online retailer of licensed T-shirts and pop culture gear from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books, and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content, and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is also brought to you by Voodoo. Watch the latest movies and TV shows anytime, anywhere. No subscriptions, no contract. Enjoy stunning quality in up to 4K ultra high definition at home and download and watch on your mobile device as well. To rent and buy from over 100,000 titles or watch thousands of movies free with Voodoo Movies on us, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. Now, back to the show. So let's move on from the MCU now over to, uh, actually, before we do that, um, we did talk about streaming just then, but in regards to the MCU, a lot of things that were coming out this year was a TV series, um, mm-hmm. Hawkeye, WandaVision, what else was that, Captain America? and uh, Loki. Uh, Loki, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, and I'm sure they're going to do more as well because Mandalorian's killing, killing it there as well. Do you think, like, I think Kevin Feige said last year that the future of the MCU is streaming. Um, do you do you see the majority of content going to be, do you imagine like maybe three or four tentpole pictures on in, in big screen? So just say maybe like introducing a new character or characters like Eternals or Shang-Chi or something else. But when it comes to continuation storylines, do you see less sequels and more TV series or miniseries developed in regards to sequel continue, continuation of storylines? I do. And I'm actually here for it. I'm, I, I, I think uh, I do. My, my only concern with the TV shows is I don't know why, but they love to put like a ton of talking in them. Mm. And I'm like, these are superhero shows. I want to see action sort of like uh, the, the Netflix uh, for, for Disney, which I guess are now non-canon to the MCU. Right. But uh, I would love to see a little bit more action in them, but I'm here for it. I, I would love to, because I feel like, um, you know, one of the big complaints about the MCU previously was that it felt more like episodic, more mm-hmm. more TV show than movies just kind of building on one another as a as a normal franchise, kind of if I could compare it to the Harry Potter series, I guess. But I but I disagreed with that criticism. But I think if they're going to meet that, that's the right way to do it. I've not seen Hawkeye yet. I decided to wait till it was all out and then binge it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh for the most part, I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed the others. I did feel Falcon and the Winter Soldier, like I said, and Loki just too much talking. They needed mm-hmm. to trim that down. But I think that's just because they're trying to get their sea legs. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say they're just learning about it. And once they uh, once they adapt to it, I think it'll be I think they'll be better. But but also that gives you the option. So if you don't like a certain character, like if you don't lock, like Hawkeye, you don't have to watch his show, mm-hmm. even if he appears in a movie you know, more than likely he's going to be maybe not the protagonist, you know, he's going to, you know, just have sporadic appearances similar to Captain America Civil War. So I actually hope that that they do do this. I would love to see them expand. I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. kind of laid laid the groundworks for that. And uh, and I think that uh, especially if they're going to introduce the X-Men, which has a broad range of characters by yeah. itself. Yeah. Uh, this would be a definitely a definite way to explore that side of the MC, which hasn't been uh, touched on. Hmm, that's a very good point, actually. I always forget about um, those 20th Century Fox acquisitions because there's still X-Men, there's still Fantastic Four, a um, bunch of others as well. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the future in regards to that. Let's move on from the MCU now to the um, DC Cinematic Universe. Um, 
it's really interesting. This year, I think there's only the one DC film that came out, which was The Suicide Squad, um, that I can think of off the top of my head anyway. Um, so that film did $167 million worldwide, which is actually quite an impressive number considering, A, um, it was also on HBO Max, and, B, it's an R-rated movie. I mean, it was James mm-hmm. Garner, like, they did R-rated films. So that's quite an impressive number for a lot, for those in, when those factors are included. Um, what's interesting to me when I think about Suicide Squad when I think about Joker and the success that film had, and just looking at the trailers that the new Batman movie, the Matt Reeves one, is out next year, it seems like where Disney is kind of like the PG-13 family movie equivalent, um, with the exception of a certain maybe a TV show here and there, DC seems to be embracing its more kind of uh, grittier nature. And I know you were just saying before in regards to the Zack Snyder um, uh, film, uh, Zack Snyder films. Um, you were such a big fan of that. Do Do you think that the, the future of the DCU is going to be that more kind of grittier Suicide Squad um, uh, type of, of film, Joker type of filmmaking, or do you, can you foresee them kind of like transitioning back and forth to more kind of family family friendly affair, like say the new Shazam, Shazam movie, for example? I think that's a kind of film that could really appease families more than say a um, uh, uh, Suicide Squad might. You know, honestly, I don't know what DC uh, is doing. <laughs> I've got to be honest. Uh, uh, it does seem because I loved Suicide Squad. I actually mm. got to meet the actor who who played uh, Polka Dot Man. That was a uh, great yeah. experience. Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I loved it. I, I think my subtitle for my review was gory fun. That's mm. what I called it. And uh, I, I actually would be OK if if DC was like, OK, we're going to take our main characters. So sort of Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman in this in certain contexts, we're going to make them more the PG-13 family friendly. However, we're going to have Matt Reeves do a, a darker version of the Batman. And it seems like they're going to uh, do this because they have the CW, right? So they're, I feel like with the CW, they're kind of testing waters. Like they had Ezra uh, Ezra Miller guest star in an episode of The Flash. I think right. it was their Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover event. And uh, so I think they're going to do something like that. So they're going to have sort of the CW uh, version. They're going to have an HBO Max version, which I, I, if I was to guess, I have kind of a feeling the DC extended universe, their cinematic universe, I, I think we're going to see that move to HBO Max. Mm. They're going to, I think they're going to copy Marvel with the MCU with the shows. And I think Peacemaker is evidence of this. Yes. Um, but and I think with the films that are going to be theatrical, I think they're going to go back to the way it was before, where each character had kind of their own standalone universe. So, mm-hmm. so like Christopher Reeve's Superman didn't cross over with Michael Keaton's Batman, Brandon Roth didn't cross over with Christian Bale or uh, Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern. You know, not this. I'm not talking about the quality of the films, obviously. I just yes. mean, uh, I, I actually think, and I, I think that's why sort of the, what we're hearing about the new Wonder Woman movie, like it sounds more out of place mm-hmm. than because uh, it's supposed to be before 1984. So it's going to be in between the first two films. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's kind of a signal to that. We, now, I do think we're going to see some crossover. I think Shazam is obviously going to cross over with Black Adam. Yeah. And I think we're going to see a Superman versus Black Adam film. Yeah. And, uh, and now, don't, Dwayne Johnson has been very vocal about trying to get Henry Cavill back as Superman. Yes. Kind of and if, if anyone can make that happen, it's Dwayne Johnson. Pretty mm-hmm. much he snaps his fingers and, the, and things happen. Yeah. Right. So I think that. Uh, but as far as will that film be part of the DCEU? I don't know. I, I did have a, a another friend of mine who's a filmmaker. He does camera work and stuff. He theorizes that DC is going to is either going to use Flash or uh, or Shazam to reboot the DCEU. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, he's and by the way, he's not an insider at Warner Brothers. He was just speculating. Yeah. But I could see that. I could see that uh, happening. Uh, yeah. So. We'll, we'll see. I uh, uh, they pretty much all the rumors are they're going to s- swap out Ben Affleck for Michael Keaton. Um, I think Michael Keaton is a better actor. I think he's a little old to play Batman. I would like to see a Batman in his prime, kind of like Christian Bell. Hmm. But that's my speculation. I think that the DCEU will move to HBO Max, and the films are going to go back to those standalone films we saw. And it, depending on the success, like if Wonder Woman three is a success, then they'll say oh, this was DCEU uh, after the fact. That's just uh, what I'm guessing. Kind of like how, how Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was, 
originally MCU, but then when a show ended, they're like, oh, wait, wait, no, no, that wasn't canon. What are you talking about? Right. Why would you, why would you think that was canon? Ha ha ha. So, yeah. I, you know, that's, that's where I think it's going to, that's where I think it's going to go. And I think it's a good idea because I, I think the major problem that those, um, the Zack Snyder verse of the whole Justice League kind of stuff was that they were trying to follow the Marvel formula too closely. And because of that, you can't help but compare the two products, right? I mean, if you're going to make a Pepsi, you've got to be aware that this Coke's already there, you know, so, and people are more, like, more than likely going to drink Coke over Pepsi. Um, and I, I think what's really cool about what they did with the Joker, especially, um, and what I think they're going to be doing with these other films is that you can step outside of the kind of like the whole world building thing, present one-off stories, put really kind of, and present these movies and experiment with them and try different audiences it's a it's a cool thing they can pull off. The flash thing is really interesting because I can I can foresee something like not to give away spoilers again, kind of like what Spider Man No Way Home did with the conclusion of that movie. It's almost kind of like felt like a soft reboot in a sort of way, but it didn't change the cast in so much of the main character, and and that works. And if they can do the same thing with a movie that's dealing with similar you know plot threads in regards to multiverses, etc., um, yeah, then I'm, I'm all for it. I just, I really do hope though that uh, they can do one more film with Henry Cavill that was uh, Superman because I am a fan of his work as Superman. Not the biggest fan of this, the films themselves, but him as Superman, I think, is a really, really strong um, actor. Yeah, he did a really I agree. I, I, I would even say that Amy Adams as Lois Lane. I thought yeah. both of them were uh, really well, pre- well represented those characters. And the whole Michael Keaton thing is really something else that having watched the first Batman in cinemas when I was a young kid, I mean, that, that was like, and that still sticks with me as my favourite my favorite Batman. But again, I think there could be one thing, though, there could be some market confusion, though, don't you think? I mean, if you have yeah. a Batman, Robert Patterson, and then a Batman, Michael Keaton, and then, you know, all that kind of stuff, there can be some market confusion there, don't you think? Well, right. And that's why I think the DCEU is going to move to HBO Max, uh, mm-hmm. kind of like uh, uh, Titans and uh, oh, what's that? What's that? the Doom Patrol? Right, they yeah. were originally on DCU and then they got moved to HBO Max. So I think the DCEU as that continuity, I, that's why I think it's going to go to HBO Max. And I think Flash will be the test for that. So, mm. uh, you know, we, we had they did this with James Bond, right? They uh, when uh, Octopussy came out. Uh, with Roger Moore, Sean Connery was in uh, I think um, it was Never Say Never Again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and there was market confusion, but they they exact that's you know that was a very negative experience for moviegoers. Yeah, because uh, uh, my my father is a big Roger Moore fan. He grew up watching those films, and so he, I said, "Did you even go see Never Say Never Again?" And he goes, and his response was, "No, it's not an official Bond film." Mm. And so I'm wondering if that's going to ha- have a similar impact with uh if they decide to split the baby there with with batman mm. especially if they make them pretty much the same right <laughs> mm. exactly right i mean it's a smart way to go if you've got different platforms then why not try different stories and different directions in there it's kind of like the content creation we kind of do of our own stuff right we've got different platforms you try different content on there i mean you can only try and then they got the they got the resources to do it and the time is now i mean the super superhero movie genre you know i uh, in a certain certain way, after at the end of um, Endgame, I felt like a bit of burnout with it, um, mm-hmm. but I couldn't help but feel excited when I saw that Batman uh, trailer. You know, because um, Batman is my favorite, you know, characters of order of all the superhero guys. And speaking of Batman, let's talk about twenty twenty two superhero movies. Let's talk about some of our most anticipated. We've talked about Flash a little bit, <clears throat> the Batman. We talked a little bit. Any any other superhero movies coming out next year that you're really looking forward to? Uh, well, I, I don't know if this this counts specifically as a superhero movie, but I was going to say Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Right. Uh, I, the first Sonic the Hedgehog was actually the last film I saw before lockdown. Mm-hmm. So I was uh, so I loved it, I, especially after the edits that they made. Um, and I'm excited about Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I think it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be very good. Uh, what, what was the other one? There's there's a, um, another one coming out. Uh, I know Aquaman's coming out pretty sure. Right, Aquaman. Aquaman I actually don't feel like there's a lot of uh, momentum for that film. Mm. I think it, I don't know if it's because of Jason Momoa's co-star, but uh, you right, know the scandal yeah. around her. We don't have yeah. to go into that, obviously, but I, I just feel like the momentum for Aquaman has kind of died. And I, but again, I think it's because they took too long to make the sequel. Yeah. But I know it was delayed because of you know the the virus of unspecified origin. Uh, as critical drinker calls it, but I think that uh, 
I think that that is kind of an issue with with that movie because all the others, I'm excited to see the Batman. I'm uh, excited to see Sonic the Hedgehog too. Uh, what was what was the other one you, you mentioned? So a couple of other ones that are coming out: uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse right. of Madness, or Love and Thunder. That's going to be pretty mm-hmm. interesting to see what happens there. Black Adam is another one as well. So Black um, Adam, I am enthused about. <laughs> yeah. Um, you mentioned Sonic. Um, you know, there's actually a movie that's coming out, and it's it's not. I I don't know whether it belongs to any of the universes with a DC or Marvel. There's a movie called Samaritan that's coming out that's starring Sylvester Stallone. Um, and it's directed by, um, oh, I forgot his name, but he's an Australian filmmaker. I'll, I'll look it up now. But he's essentially playing kind of like a, a lost superhero, like a retired superhero of some sort. He has to come back into, um, you know, the butt-kicking uh, uh, glory days. And I think it, it could be a really good, um, let's look up Overlord now, it could be a really good kind of like alternative to you know the stuff that you have there right now, I'm just look, looking up over um, Julius Avery. Hey. Julius okay. Avery is, is a director, and um, yeah, Stallone stars. It was supposed to come out this year. Actually, it was supposed to come out of September this year, and it got pushed back. Um, here we go, Samaritan. Um, and I'm just looking now. A young boy learns that a superhero who was thought to have gone missing after an epic battle 20 years ago may in fact still be around. So I think it's kind of like, you know, Stallone's down, character's down in the dumps, he's homeless, almost like a Hancock kind of situation. Mm, um, and you. he has to kind of find uh, who he is again. And from the sounds of it, um, it's, it's like a more of a kind of like a grisly, uh, and it's an original story too. It's not based on any properties beforehand. Mm. So that could be something cool as well. I'm a big Stallone fan, so that could be something that's Oh, yeah, me as well. And and you know what? I, I'm actually glad that we're getting more variety. Obviously, Invincible on Prime Video. Right. I thought uh, Invincible was fantastic. Uh, I haven't done a review on it on, uh, on my platform yet. I was trying to wait for the new year. I thought I'd just pop in with Invincible. Uh, but I thought it was uh, I thought it was very well made. The voice cast in it is fantastic. Uh, I didn't read Invincible the comic, so I, I've actually heard from people who read the comic. They did. Uh, they're split on whether they like it or love it. As, uh, but uh, it seems like mostly people have enjoyed it. I'm not familiar with the uh, the boys, obviously, uh, but I've heard it's really good. I've not watched it yet, but. Uh, but I think we're going to see more of these pop up. We had Bloodsport, I think it was in 2020. That's a, that uh, the um, uh, Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel. Thing? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it's where he played a uh, Valiant Entertainment uh, character. I was actually hoping we would see more from Valiant Entertainment of the uh, sort of uh, ones, uh, especially with uh, they have another character named Ninjack, who I think would be very good, well adapted for the screen. Uh, so I'm hoping that. Uh, like you said, in-game kind of, uh, I wouldn't say in-game fatigued me, but it made me go, okay, this is over. Like yeah. it's been, it's been 20 years, the fad's over. I thought uh, Far From Home was, was a good little epilogue, but I was kind of like, but, but then, like you said, a trailer premieres and I get super hyped about yeah. stuff. You know, that's, that's what always happens. It's kind of like with, with the Batman, Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson, every time they open their mouth, I roll my eyes, but then I watch the trailers and I'm like, oh, I'm so hyped about this. Yeah. And so, you know, the latest the, trailer, one of the latest trailer with Catwoman was something else with um, Zoe Kravitz. She, yeah. she looks great. And um, I think it's Paul Dano that's not a fan of her mask, but right. but she does look great as as Catwoman. It's, it's it's an interesting look that they're having for that film. It's 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 something different. I think that's what I really kind of like about it. There's um, you know, after the whole uh, Nolan trilogy and the stuff that Zack Snyder did, it looks different to the other stuff. And I think that's what you need, just a little, you know. And supposedly they have alternate endings. So there could be some type of someone showing up, whether that is, whether they're going to have um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker show up there or not. That that would be pretty cool. I don't know if they will, but that would be pretty cool. If, um, if Joaquin Phoenix Joker came on screen, I would be okay with that because Joaquin Phoenix was brilliant as the Joker. Yeah. But they would to me, they would have to establish this isn't the Joker from that movie. Right. Uh, uh, let, let him embrace this new cinematic venture. It seemed like at first Joaquin Phoenix wasn't interested in coming back, but now it seems like he is. Yeah. Uh, he's made comments that he would be open to re- reprising the role. So hopefully he will in the Batman. I think he would be uh, great at it. Cause you know, we had this really great high with Mark Hamill, uh, Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger. Then we had, it, this is my opinion. We had a low with Jared Leto. Oh yeah. We then, definitely had a low. With <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Yeah, I'm a good company. Then. And then now I feel like we're having a high with, uh, with Joaquin Phoenix. So yeah. uh, I would love to see him reprise, reprise the role. If that's the direction Warner brothers wants to go. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. And also next year, Black Panther, Wakanda forever. 
that's going to be an interesting one because they're trying to pull off a Black Panther movie without a Black Panther. So you know, yeah. I think they made a mistake saying they weren't going to recast him, uh, and I think they made a mistake uh, pushing this film so hard. I mm-hmm. would have let Ryan Coogler direct Blade, which I, I'm sure the director they'll get will do a, a good job. I, I'm a big Blade fan, but it's uh, or I should say Blade movie fan. I don't. I'm not big collecting on his comics. But, yeah, me either. Yeah. But uh, I would like to. I think they should have let him direct Blade. And then taking some breather, because I feel like the Wakanda uh, Forever film is just happening so fast after the sad, tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman. And I think that they kind of, uh, to to rush this film, I think it was a bad idea. And it feels more like they're capitalizing off of mm. him, uh, even though he's not in it, right? They yeah. they've made it clear they're not going to recast him, uh, even though I have a feeling after this film, we'll get an announcement that someone is going to uh, be the new Black Panther. And then they're mm-hmm. going to say, oh, we just met that one film, right? That's how this stuff always works, right? I so, mean, if they were going to do a film where it's about the supporting cast in a, the world of Wakanda, that would be better as a serial um, for uh, for um, Disney Plus than a big screen well, thing. There is a comic book uh, foundation for Shuri being the Black Panther. I believe right. she was Black Panther while uh, uh, T'Challa's character decided to stay in Wakanda. So he let her be kind of the international Black Panther. So if they wanted to do something like that, I could see them making that work. I actually thought Shiri was a really good character. So uh, I could see that happening. But but I agree with you. I think if they were going to just exclusively kind of maybe divide it out between all of these other characters, then it would have worked very, better as a series. And I think uh, that's something we're going to really have to look out for now because, you know, the this year was, you know, there were superhero movies, but it didn't really feel like a superhero movie year. Next year, it definitely feels like a superhero movie year. And the only thing that's really in its way is whatever is going to happen with the pandemic. But I think it's going to be all ships more because they've experimented with the different streaming models. I can't see them stopping anymore. Um, I think everything is going to be full steam ahead. And it's going to be interesting to see. It really is uh, what next year is going to be like in um and Jacob, I thank you so very much for, for joining me today. Can you, if you want to let the people know where they can find this stuff. You can find all my links at studiojakemedia.com. You can buy my books on Amazon or booklocker.com. And that's awesome. Uh, and I tell everyone out there, please do check out um, Jacob's um, uh, Studio Jake Media YouTube channel as well, because it's always got interviews and such on there. Coming back in January. Coming back in January. And um, yeah, I really recommend people check out your stuff, Jacob, because I'm a, I'm a fan of it. This has been a real pleasure. Uh, I could have you on. It's great. We can talk superhero movies and hopefully uh, we can talk again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me on. I had a great time. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.